Hi, hello, my name is Marina. I'm 59 and I live in Sweden. Today I am actually doing a collab with you, video. Um, I am collabing with a person, woman, who is called Nina. Her name is Karina. My name is Marina. <laughs> and she actually lives pretty close to me. Uh, in a town called Västerås in Sweden and that's less than an hour by car from where I live uh, so we have actually been talking about meeting uh, and we had a plan and a date and everything but then I think she got sick or something and then time just fly by so flew by <laughs> I don't know uh, and so we haven't gotten around to that yet but I'm sure we, we will eventually, maybe this summer, I don't know. We will see. Uh, she does a lot of stuff on her channel, so I highly recommend you to go watching her. Uh, she talks in Swedish, um, but she does a lot of uh, like project panning uh, videos. She does uh, makeup for beginners, makeup for mature skin, lots of stuff. Uh, she, if you want to learn stuff, go and watch her videos. She's really great at educating people, which I am not. <laughs> I just do my stuff without talking about what I'm doing. Um, and I'm the makeup artist here. <laughs> and, oh, that's so embarrassing. But anyhow. Uh, I will talk about that a bit later because she has also given me uh, some questions for me to answer. I'm afraid I haven't done the same for her. I'm the worst of coming up with stuff like that. Uh, so I will just recommend you to go and watch her. She's lovely. She's also very calm, very soothing. Uh, I love listening to her in the mornings when I'm getting ready for work, for example. Because she's so calm and soothing, it's exactly what you need in the mornings when you're tired and don't want a lot of stuff around you. Stuff, I mean, fuss. Anyhow, the palette we uh, are using for this collab is the Nomad Cosmetics Whistler Snow Lodge palette. Because we figured it's still winter, so why not use it? I think it's like she has uh, recently gotten hers along with two others. I think she ordered three of Nomad's palettes and I think it's her first palettes from Nomad. I have pretty much all of their palettes and I'm definitely going to order their new one that releases in a couple of days. Today it's Sunday the 21st of January. Um, well, it's still winter, so we're using this one. It's a really cool tone one. Well, it had, well, yeah, it has warm tone one as well. <coughs> Excuse me. This one and all of these is really warm shadows. But here's winter to me. <laughs> but I will see what I will do. Um, so I'm excited to see what she will come up with. I haven't got a clue, we just decided that we'll use the same palette and you can, um, both she and me can do whatever we want. Uh, so I will start with uh, putting the For Fox, the really funny names of these shadows, For Fox sake, that one in my crease. Yeah, so she have given me, I don't know how many, like, and what if it fell, six questions, so it's not a lot, but some of them I'm not sure if I will be able to answer, and by the way I have prepped my face, so I have my base and my powder on from here to here, <laughs> I have my eyeshadow primer on and my brows, so I will talk of, of what I've used in my face later on. Yeah. Yeah, so the first question is 
When did your interest in makeup start and how? Well, how, I don't know. I have always been interested since I was so little that I can, I can't even remember not being interested in makeup. Now, I grew up in a small village uh, in the beginning, middle of the 60s and well, I was a young kid in the 70s. I'm born in 1964. Um, and where I grew up, there was not one single store. I don't even think you could buy a mascara anywhere. Um, I don't think that. We had two different grocery stores. For those of you who live in Sweden, it was Konsum and Ica. It's our main grocery stores where most people do their shopping, food shopping. And the closest I could get to makeup was soaps, shampoo, conditioner, and stuff like that, who is sold in your grocery store. <laughs> and this was a really small grocery store. So, nothing to choose from. And of course, I was a kid, uh, too young to even wear makeup, if you ask me. In the beginning but I was always hanging around by the shampoo shelves on the in the grocery store hoping for uh, hoping to find something interesting someday <laughs> uh, I loved looking at pictures in magazines of models be wearing makeup and you know all of that um, <laughs> yeah. So I've always been interested and I don't know where it came from. My mother have never been interested. She had one lipstick with the most horrible color ever. And she had, you know, those cake mascaras where they back then spit on the brush and did like this, uh, that and put it on. So gross. But that's what they did. And I guess that's pretty much her makeup. Uh, <laughs> so I was kind of sneaking in the bathroom looking at those two things also. Me and my friend were playing when we got a little bit older that we were doing our skincare and putting makeup on and we just smeared whatever we had in our face and playing. Uh, yeah. So where it came from, I do not know, but it, the interest has always been there. When I was a teenager, when I was 19, uh, I moved to Stockholm. Uh, that's a huge difference from living where I grew up. And I... Uh, immediately took the tube into the city and walked around in the department stores watching all the makeup um, stands and you know all of that and I was in heaven and still that that was nothing compared what we have today with the internet and all of that nothing it, it's a huge different now from what it was back then you can get hold of things you didn't have the internet in Sweden, makeup has been and still is. It's nothing. We have nothing here compared to where you have in England and the States. And yeah, it's nothing. Uh, you can't buy any fun stuff here, if you ask me. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that. I am going to take the snowmad, that dark blue mat, and place that in my outer corner. The next question is, how do you feel when creating a makeup look? Well, <laughs> I have never thought about how I feel, I think. For the most part, I think I'm frustrated because I don't think 
things are going the way I want it to. And actually something that is really frustrating is going back to question number one. How should I explain this? Um, I wish I had the skin and the looks that I had when I was in my 20s uh, now because now my skills are much better uh, the stuff is much better you can get hold of so much better things and so much more fun things so I feel that it would have been so much more fun to put makeup on back then if I have had the things I have now then <laughs> you get it what I mean uh, so now when I ho have a lot of more fun stuff that didn't exist back then my face is getting wrinkly my lids are getting you know saggy skin and hanging skin and I think it could be could have been looking so much better if I had the stuff I had then now <laughs> you know what I mean uh, yeah but still I always feel happy putting on makeup. Of course you get frustrated when things doesn't go as you want them to go. Things get patchy or you get disappointed for pointed for some product or you know. Uh, <clears throat> but to me makeup is therapy. I have problems with anxieties now and then. <clears throat> And you all saw my rheuma, and I have rheumatism, RA. I have a lot of pain every now and then. And to me, this is my therapy. I kind of forget that I'm in pain or forget my anxiety. And um, so it always makes me feel good in the end. Then, of course, you can, be, can get pissed because you don't things doesn't turn out the way you want them to <laughs> but that's another story um, yeah so overall it always makes me feel good it's relaxing I think and I try to do a look almost every day I always do a proper look every day for work uh, I do not go to work without makeup if I can uh, can avoid it. Uh, that's why I'm always up early in the morning because that's kind of my moment of the day to sit there at five o'clock in the morning, five, five thirty, putting my makeup on, having my coffee. No one is disturbing me. Everybody else is asleep except for my hobby, but he doesn't ex disturb me anyhow. Uh, it's kind of that's my moment of the day. I think so I love that and and when I'm off work I try to do at least one look all on those days as well because I just think it's so relaxing to sit here and be trying to be a bit creative and yeah and there's a lot of times that I'm looking at myself thinking what the hell are you doing you look like crap but then most often it's a case of trust the process <laughs> in the end it usually turns out okay at least okay uh, yeah so I'm going to cut my crease what's new nothing <laughs> uh, and I will be quiet like so and if you hear things in the background it's my hobby who is in his workshop doing stuff uh, yeah so the next question what was your reason for studying to a makeup artist no reason at all i think i don't think i had a reason it was just something that started to grow on me <laughs> 
uh, it was at the same time that I had discovered more colors and more makeup and I found the Swedish brand makeup store that was I think pretty new in Sweden back then I uh, took my MUA uh, class in 2007 so it's like in August it will be like 15 years ago I think if I'm counting 16 I think even never mind um, so I have started to I have not been always been this colorful with my makeup mainly because you couldn't get that type of makeup in the stores in Sweden back then and the internet wasn't invented yet I'm from the Stone Age <laughs> um, hang on I need to do makeup as well um, I am taking the black comb. I don't know what that means. The, the shimmery blue one. Black comb. 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 You explain it to me, please. And I am placing that. I will spray it. Placing that closest to the matte blue. Uh, yeah, so my um, makeup was developing, you could say. My interest was growing. I found more and more fun stuff. Makeup store back then was a really fun place to go to. They had a lot of eyeshadows with a lot of colors, glitters and shimmers and glitter liners and cool lipsticks. And it was fun. To shop their stuff <sighs> and back then when I discovered all of this I was also working in a clothing shop for women women and children private shop private owned it was the best working time in my life uh, I discovered that I liked fashion and clothes and to combine clothes with shoes and makeup and my nails and it was a really great time and I loved working there unfortunately I worked there for five years and then she closed the store she sold it for various reasons and the new owner was shit and she ran down the store into the bottom and destroyed everything that we had built up while I was working there, so I quit after a while, after just a few weeks. Never mind, so well, everything was so fun. And by then, I started to get a lot of comments about my makeup from customers, and you know, the girl in the cash register at the grocery store, everybody was commenting on my makeup, asking me if I was a makeup artist. And so on. Now I'm taking the green shimmer, Whistler. Um, so I actually started to think that I would like to do go uh, to take this education um, really without knowing what that meant. <laughs> um, so eventually I did that. Um, it was a 10 week, every day 10 week uh, course. I'm kind of trying to make this overlap, the green and the blue. And those 10 weeks were the best 10 weeks I've had in my life, I think. It was so, so fun. I will never forget it. Now in Sweden it's really difficult to make a living on being a makeup artist. You need to, need to be really, really talented. You need to have contacts. You need to be able to get into the movie world or the TV world or um, f as a freelance makeup artist. And that is nothing for me. Back then my children were small. Uh, I... 
needed to know that I could get home from from work uh, at a certain time of the day and needed needed to um, get them from daycare and you know I couldn't because if you're a makeup artist on maybe if you're on a film set for example maybe you need to work like for 48, 48 hours straight not being able to get home in time you can't do that when you have small children in the house it's not possible at least not how it works in Sweden uh, so that and I don't think I would have liked to do that either that's not for me I'm not that type of makeup person and TV is so boring TV makeup because especially in Sweden because I don't think they have nothing else but one brown eyeshadow and that's it everybody that works on TV all women has brown eyeshadow oh I couldn't live with that and I don't like to get up and be standing there working at four o'clock in the morning no way that's not for me and then I also realized that if you should work as a makeup artist for example in uh, places like well we have kicks it's a Swedish uh, they have you know everything makeup perfume skincare shampoo everything that has to do with all of that um, you don't get full time when you work in those places you can maybe get 20 hours a week and I can't make a living of that <coughs> I'm afraid so that doesn't work so I have basically not never ever worked as a makeup artist I do had done some brides every now and then and some small jobs but that all only is pocket money and I haven't done it in several years now I kind of lost interest in that uh, being a working makeup artist uh, but I'm really glad that I did those 10 weeks because it was so much fun and yeah this is getting a little bit patchy talking about me not being satisfied <laughs> mm, okay so this is a tough one uh, what are the biggest differences being MUA and not what and then following question what was the most important thing you learned when studying to a makeup artist the biggest difference being a makeup artist and not actually I cannot talk about that because I have never worked as a makeup artist so I don't know mm. but it's a really nice feeling to watch your diploma saying that you are a professional makeup artist and know that they have approved you to be that even though I'm not working as it and by now it's the time has passed so for so, such a long time and I don't work on other people basically so I don't think I would have the confidence to even try it again well of course I could make up on some friend or something but to do it and charge someone for it and all of that, no. The biggest difference. And of course you have somewhat more knowledge about things. But time, as I said, time has flied and you also forget about stuff. And I'm so into putting makeup on myself. So I'm kind of stuck in how I do it on me and what I use and what I think works for me so I don't know really what was the most important thing you learned while when studying to a MUA I don't know I don't know that either important thing I think spontaneously when I think back of it 
which is still the hardest thing that I really had a hard time to learn then and that I still think is so so hard and that is figuring out if someone is cool toned or warm toned if you should have cool tone foundation or warm tone foundation I don't even know for myself basically I just try something and see if it's good and if it's good I use it <laughs> professional hey <laughs> Uh, but that we learned and we learned we didn't have a foundation that was ready for that person or that we had nine different colors that you should learn to mix together so it suits the one you're putting makeup on um, we learned about how to put makeup on people who should be in front of a camera with a lot of lights and stuff like that uh, that's not something I have never ever used since I've never done those types of jobs. Uh, and but that's a good thing to know that you don't you can't wear the same type of makeup if you're in front of a camera in a studio TV studio uh, as you have in your daily daily what do you say in your day to day life. Um, I forget to put makeup on. Well, yeah, a lot of those things we learned, technical things um, that I have never used since because I don't work as it. I was thinking that I should not film while putting my base on because this video will be very long, but I still have a lot to talk about, so I don't know. Mm. The next question is, this I don't like to answer. <laughs> what shall I change when doing my makeup that will take my looks to the next level? I would say glitter. <laughs> I love glitter. There should be more glitter in everyone's life, I think. And sparkles and gemstones and whatever. Sequins and stuff. I think Karina is, or Nina, uh, is doing really really great makeup looks I love her looks and she's also a colorful woman like colorful makeup but she also do uh, neutral and nudes and stuff from time to time more than I do and I think she does it really well you do it well Nina uh, and I don't really think you should change anything I think makeup is something you should do you, whoever you are, and what you, makes you satisfied and not try to do anything that someone else thinks you should do. Because if you're confident in what you're wearing and that goes for clothes and hairstyles and glasses and whatever, it will show that you're confident. If you wear something that makes you uncomfortable, it will show that you are uncomfortable. So you do you. That's the best thing I can say and add glitter, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah. What other interest do you have besides makeup? Well, I will tell you when I get back after putting my face on. See you in a bit. Well, I'm done. Uh, so uh, the last question still remains. I will get to that one soon. But first I thought we will go through what I have in my face. Uh, so my primer is the Strobe Glow Aspen from Makeup Store. I don't know for how long I've been trying to pan this one. But now it's almost. I don't think it's anything in it. So maybe one or two uses. Maybe. Finally. Uh, I don't like it. Um, my base, also trying to pan this one. I think this is a good one, but for me, talking about age and wrinkles and stuff, um, the All Nighter Waterproof Longwear Liquid Foundation, and I have mine in 2.0 by Urban Decay. It's a really full covering foundation, and it doesn't look good on me 
anymore. It's too covering. Uh, otherwise, I think it's good, but I need something lighter these days. Uh, my powder is my everyday go-to powder by Isadora, loose setting powder in Fair, Swedish brand. My bronzer is the Murre Murre Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. I have a big pan in this one. And I have mine in the shade Light Bronzer. Um, my highlight, also by Nomad Cosmetics. Stockholm Midnight Sun Highlighter. It's a goldy one. Use this one a lot, actually. I thought I wasn't... Goldy ones are not my favorite, but this one I use a lot. My blush is by Kaleidos. The mono blush in Sanguine. Sanguine, I don't know how to say it. Looks like this. Really pretty. Use this one a lot during Christmas with my Christmas looks. Um, and I also used a face mist. Shake and Glow Luminous Setting Spray by L'Oreal. The base for my eyeshadows is that base, Crease Killer Eyeshadow Base from Gloss Gods, Swedish brand. I like this one. Uh, and the shadows, of course, is from uh, the Whistler Snow Lodge palette by Nomad Cosmetics. And I have been using that one in my on my brow bone. Uh, that one in the outer corner. That one, the blue shimmer there. And that one is the green in the inner third part of my lid. That one is highlight in my inner corner. It's called Powder Specialist. And a tiny bit under here, I've used Ski Bum. This one is so, so pretty. I don't think you can see it. No, sorry. <laughs> that one. You can see it's shifting in pink. Really gorgeous. So that's that. Uh, I did put on some lashes. It's the... Where did I have the box? The I love this name. Oink. Blushes. No blushes. Oh, I'm tired. Lashes from Metamorphosis. I love pigs. I have a pig collection over there on the top shelf. You can see it's too dark, I think. Um, my eyeliner is from Artitude Cosmetics Split It Painter's Paradise Palette. And I use this, it's a really dark bluish green. The glitter in my crease is a really old one that I've had for ages. Medusa's makeup and the color name is Key Lime Pie. And I, I glued it on with another glitter eyeliner from BH Cosmetics in Synergy. I don't think this one exists anymore. I had it for a long time. So I just dipped the brush into this one and drew a line. And my mascara is the Essence Sculpted Volume, Lash Princess Sculpted Volume 1. I ha only have it down here. And my brows is from Dip Brow Pomade by Anastasia. My lippy is Dune, Done, Dune, D-U-N-E by Kaleidos. Not my favorite color. But I thought it would look nice with this look. Yeah, so that is it. The question was, uh, what other interests do you have besides makeup? Uh, well, makeup has kind of taken the whole of me. <laughs> How should I say that? Uh, it's basically the only thing that I do on my spare time, especially now during winter when we can't be out in the garden, which I actually have been today, because gardening is one of my also 
big interest that I like to do, but that of course is mostly in the summer. Today we have actually been out in the garden and I actually have been raking, not leaves though, Be even though we have snow on the ground, because we took down a tree yesterday, a really big tree that was starting to get rotten and I was afraid that it will fall down on somebody. So we took it down and we had to clean up both on the street outside our fence and on our lawn because there were branches and gravel everywhere. So I have been raking <laughs> seven uh, degrees below Celsius, pretty cold and but really sunny and crisp today. So that's why I'm in my Teletubby outfit because I'm feeling a little bit mm, like this because I got really cold. And after that we actually did a fire, made a fire and barbecued some hot dogs and sat outside to eat them in. Well, the sun was almost gone by then, but nevertheless, we used to do that every winter because we think it's cozy. But, well, yeah, um, where was I? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, well, gardening, I love that. It's so nice to put a seed in the dirt and make it, watch it grow. I like that a lot. Uh, I used to do a lot of uh, knitting and crocheting back in the days. I don't do that a lot anymore, but I would really love to get into it again. I have some crocheting laying behind the cow next to the couch in the evenings, but it just lays there and don't take it up and continue crocheting. It's going to be a top for the summer. We'll see if it will be done before winter is over so I can use it this summer. I don't know. Uh, I used to knit and crochet, especially knit a lot when I was younger. Uh, and going to a yarn store is basically the same to me as it is to as going into a makeup store. I love it. All the colors and all the stuff you think you can do when you see all of that. It's, I love that feeling. So that is something I really would like to go back to. But somehow it feels like makeup is always what draws me in. And in the end of the day, I always end up at my makeup table in my makeup corner here in the basement. Yeah. So that's it. I'm not a reader. I wish I was. I was when I was younger, but not anymore. Um, baking. I like to bake. I used to bake a lot when I also when I was younger. Um, I could sit during the week planning what to do, what kind of cakes, not cakes, cookies, cookies and bread and all of that stuff. And when Friday came. Saturday morning, I went down to the grocery store, bought all the stuff I needed, made lists, and then I could stay, f be in the kitchen for a whole day, the whole Saturday, just baking, 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 because I loved it. I don't do that anymore, but I wish I could get back my interest for that again, because it's so nice to have something in the freezer that you have done yourself, if someone comes for a cup of coffee or someone. You want to, to invite someone for coffee or Swedish fika, as we say. <laughs> well, I won't hold you anymore. I do hope you will go back to Nina's channel and watch her. I will link her channel and I will link her video. I don't know if I said so in the beginning, but she is talking in Swedish, but I know she will do this video on in English. Uh, so please go and watch her and subscribe maybe and if you're from my channel, please tell her I sent you and If you're here from Nina's channel, I welcome you. Thank you for watching and welcome here. Hope I You will considering hitting the subscribe button. I would really like that um, a close-up maybe
something like that so i don't know quite yet when this video will be up but now i've made done it i will edit and it will be up pretty soon of course it's already up when you see this <laughs> stupid me okay so i wish you a nice sunday afternoon or whatever day it is when you see this um, uh, take care thank you so much for watching and Nina, thank you so much for wanting to do this with me. I appreciate that a lot. Maybe we can do it sometimes again soon. <laughs> so you take care. Or take care. Take care. Be careful out there. And until I see you the next time. Bye bye.